having a party today. It's a Japanese balloon flower party, just like the Nancy Page ladies. <laughs> well, when the Nancy Page Club members entered Edna's home, they found gay balloons floating around. Well, they wondered if she was having a children's party until she explained that the flower for the week was the Japanese balloon flower. Now this flower was named because the buds look like Japanese lanterns which open in balloon fashion. And if you want to be really playful, you can just walk up to them and pop them open. Well, that sounds like a party. Well, here's a photo of a balloon flower bud. It's just getting ready to pop open. And then you see some of the other flowers in shades of purples. Uh, the balloon flower is kind of an unusual flower, which a lot of the, the people had never even heard of. Well, that is true because I never heard of it. Well, in the original Nancy Page pattern, Nancy suggested to use a stripe fabric. And in this antique quilt, the quilt maker did the very same thing. I just love those orange stripes. And look at the little buds, orange stripe buds. They're so cute. Well, happy birthday, Eleanor. This Thank is you. from your student, Marilyn. She did the dimensional balloon flower using a stripe, of course, and I love the way she even matched the lines in the stripe. That's perfect. She's talented. She is, but this is a great idea because... A birthday card. A birthday card quilt. Something small and simple. Yeah, and fast. <laughs> in a day. Uh, yeah. Well, Patty, I just love your bright blue that you used in your balloon flower. Thank you. The balloon flowers come in shades of blue or purple or even pink. And Tiger Tiger Burning Bright describes the tiger lily, our second flower today. Now we used two shades of yellow for the lily. It is just perfect. Now in the original pattern, Nancy published it in 1928, and she suggested to use plain fast gingham in orange. And the original quilt maker did a great job with that orange fabric. She said you could also use old-fashioned calico spotted with tiny bits of kermine or red. And I love those cute little polka dots. At first, I thought they were so silly, and then I discovered the tiger lily really does have freckles. <laughs> a freckled flower. Yeah. Of course. Well, Nancy Page's grandmother grew her tiger lilies back against the stone wall. Nancy said they brightened the gray stone even on a sunny day, and on a dull day, the lilies seemed to burn and glow. Well, I'm ready to burn and glow. You are, and I'm ready too. Okay, let's get started. Patty, did you know that the Romans thought they could cure corns with the juice of the lily bulb? Oh, that's interesting. Well, it's even more interesting because the Romans wore sandals oh, all the time. that's right. Oh, well, that was a corny story. That's corny. <laughs> well, I hear that lilies come in all different colors. They do. I just discovered that. I was looking in this book. This is called the Time Life Encyclopedia of Gardening. And I found all these varieties, which you can see from each color family uh, with our yellow fabric. We have a light and a dark yellow. You can do the Cupid doll oh, or cute. in the peach colors, it's called the Twilight Sky. And then in pink, we have the Emperor's Robe or in the red family, we have the Oriental Ruby. Beautiful. These are exotic names, aren't they? They are. Well, because we're doing the tiger lily, we use the two different values of peach. We use the dark peach and the medium peach. And this is the flat lily, and is it ever easy to do? Now, there are just two basic pieces for it. We have the base A, and it looks like this. And all you do is place the fusible interfacing right sides together with the fabric. Oh, this is the dotted side right there. Now, you can trace the pattern on the interfacing, or you could just go ahead and use the pre-printed interfacing. And this is that basic shape right there, trimmed and turned and right side out. Then the pieced uh, bud looks like this. It's just two pieces of fabric sewn together. Press that seam open, and then you just line up the dashed line with the seam. And the two leaves are exactly the same. Piece two pieces of, of green together in different values. 
press the seam open, and then place the two leaves on there. Now, when you get to the calyx, this is the exciting part, because you need a small straw. You are going to be out looking at every size straw in the fast food restaurants, but you just take and you take two pieces of green fabric, place them right sides together, just trace the templates on there, and then sew on the line. Trim it and turn it. Now we're using the two pieces of fabric with the templates because we don't want to see any interfacing around those dark greens. The first thing you need to do is take your handle piece, the handle's already in place, and just place it on top of your placement sheet right here. And what I want to focus on are these lines for the stems. Ooh, look at that hook. It's kind of like a captain Curves. hook there. <laughs> well, you just place it right on there, trace the stem lines with a permanent marking pen. And now, I'm going to show you how to sew it. It's a little bit tricky. You need to have your bias strip. It's one and a fourth inches wide, and you press it so that the wrong sides are on the inside. You use a quarter inch seam, and you always start on the inside of the curve. Your bias always goes on the inside of the curve. So start at the bottom, line it up. Ooh, make sure with that little bias end that you have enough extra. Use your quarter inch foot. How about my stiletto? I've got to have my stiletto. But you just head on up towards the curve. And right here, I want to stop right near the top. So to help that out, I'm just going to stick a pin right in there. Just line that up. Keep on going. How about some green thread? That would probably really help. And then when you get right here, if you'd like, you could just go ahead and lock stitch it in place or use a back stitch. Once you've gone, clear up to the top, then just trim those threads and so that it curves better, just take a little nick right here up to that seam and then twist it around and you just cut a half inch beyond that stitching. Now, this is going to be the best part. See if it works out right. So you just take it and you curve it over. You fold this over your stitches. And then right up here, you're going to take this and just hook that right around. And then, let's see if I can keep that turned under. You just hook it around and you can go back with the blind hem stitch. And sew this down with invisible thread the whole way around there. Oh, I've got to keep that hook turned under there. And so, Patty, do you have the flat one this all in looks, place? This looks flat so far. It looks good. Yeah, we have our base, our leaves, we've got our stems. And if you'd like to pass me your flat bud, okay. I will complete the flower. And then on top of the, the bud, we have oop, the little calyx goes here and the big calyx on the big flower. Now, for the dimensional flower, I've added a couple more petals. Uh, using my template plastic, I've cut two petals, uh, placing the light peach and the dark peach right sides together, and then you stitch and turn. And then I, I crease this, uh, this petal diagonally or uh, lengthwise, and then put a little tuck along the top edge and then this is going to go right at the top. You need and some pins. I would love a pin or okay. two. So do you sew that by hand right up there? Of course. I don't <laughs> think I could do this on the machine. Maybe you could do it on the machine. And then I'm going to put the second petal right beside it. Okay. And then to give it a little flare, I'm just going to fold back the tips. Perfect. Look Lovely. at that. Yeah. See, that was easy. And now do you hand stitch that down all around I the I do. Outfit? Now, because I've got this big uh, little kind of like an open space underneath, uh -huh. just to keep it from getting crushed, I've taken a, a cotton ball and a two-inch circle of fabric. Mm -hmm. And if you sew around the outside of the circle, pull it tight. And then with your thread still attached, you would just stitch right through the center of the flower and catch that little ball in the middle. And that helps it hold its shape. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. And then I would um, do the bud next. And for the bud, I started with two strips. I have my light and dark peach. 
sew the two strips together, press the seam open, and then a second seam to make a little tube. Ooh, and right. then uh, stitch around one end, use uh -huh. a needle and thread to gather. Just a basting stitch. Yeah, just gather it tight, and then we get the jumbo straw. The milkshake straw. Right. Just slip the straw in the opening, and then with the round end of the bodkin, I push into the straw, and that oh, turns good. it right side out. Perfect. Yeah, and just to complete the bud, that I, looks good. Yeah, I just want to tuck in the top on both sides, and then this goes on top of the stem. Okay, more pins. And one more pin, and top it off with a little calyx. Perfect. One here and one here. Okay, so then once you hand stitch around these pieces, then you could add a little bit of dimension, like the uh, stitching that we see on the quilt and the wall. How about some um, French knots? Sounds good. And some back stitch just to connect that all yeah, together. Yeah, just for the stamens. They have nice, long, beautiful stamens. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Well, the lily is the sign of purity. Well, this ah. is pretty easy to do. So let's go on to the balloon flower. Patty, did you know that the balloon flower is one of the most coveted blue flowers in the garden? Now, most gardeners are just greedy for blue. Well, I'm not surprised because, you know, Mother's favorite color is blue, and she looks everywhere for those blue flowers. That's true. Well, I think Mother would love this wall hanging also with all the blue in it. Here's the Japanese balloon flower right in the center. Five petals. You can see three of them use two values of lavender, and then two of them are just one value of lavender. And, oh, look right in that center, that cute little yo-yo, little touch of yellow. That's good. Yeah, yellow and purple are complementary colors, so you really need that little bit of yellow to set off the, the purple. And then around the outside edge of the flower are two ten and a half inch squares surrounding the, the block. And then that purple folded border. Ooh, I love the dark border. And then the stripe with the miter. Ooh, and the blue binding on the outside edge. Our mother loves blue, huh? She does. Well, the steps are easy to do. They're very similar with the piecing because you just take the two values of the lavender piece them together with that quarter inch seam, press it open, and then right along here we have the three different two valued ones, and then down here the two buds. Oh, so they are in a row. And then up here the two fusibles traced right on there. The two petals are ready to go, and actually I'll show you how to turn those in just a minute. And then the leaves come from the piecing. You can go ahead and do a piece leaf and just a plain leaf. And we are back to that little straw again. You've got to look all over all your fast food restaurants because these little calyxes surely need a small straw. It's two pieces of fabric, right sides together. Take your template, draw your templates on, sew on the line, and look at that tiny hole. We'll just get them turned right side out and then press them with the wooden iron. Well, that yo-yo in the center comes from a two-inch circle. And I'll tell you, I go in the kitchen and I look all over for different size circles, measure my cups, measure my glasses. The best way is just to use the jumbo circle because it has all of the different sizes on here. Just find the two inch one, cut a square a little bit larger. Ooh, look at that, Pat. Just trace your circle right in there and then just cut it out. Now. I have a pretty good sized kitchen, but I can't ever find all those right size cups. Okay, so then just take your circle and you're just going to cut right on the line. And then you need to hand thread a hand sewing needle. Oh, let me get around here. I'm going. And this is excess. Just take it, get rid of it. <laughs> now take your needle and thread. And I'm, I'm into double, double threading. I have to have two the double thread and the knot in the end, but put it in your thread conditioner. Just run it right through there. And it would be best if the color of the thread matched your fabric. Okay, so just hold your yo-yo wrong side up and then take 
long stitches, large stitches around the outside. And this is how you make a really small, tight yo-yo. You take large stitches. You would think you're supposed to do little tiny stitches, but not true. You want to take large stitches, and you want to put them right along the outside. So just let me take a couple more stitches around here. Okay, you've got your needle full. I have my needle full. Once you have your needle full, then just pull it and then just keep on going. Whoa, boy, I have some really great yo-yo quilts that I've seen made in the 1920s and the 1930s, just yo-yos together. And actually, Sue made me one that is incredible. It's called a quarter dime yo-yo. Oh. What she did, what she made the circle from a quarter, and when she was done sewing, it was a dime. Oh. Pretty good. Huh. Little, huh? That was for my birthday. Sounds like oh. modern economics. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I am right back to this, and I could barely finish this off. Okay, so gather up the stitches, and before we're done, all we have to do is just pop this right side out, and then this is tiny. Gather the stitches so that they're even around there, and just pull it flat, like so. And that's going to finish off the very center and that's it so pat do you have your dimensional pieces ready I to go do. and this is what the five petals look like very similar to yours except instead of interfacing on the back i have fabric on the back i've used a template and i traced two in the solid lavender and then three from the piece strips and then i turned right side out Fold the raw edges inside at the bottom, mm -hmm. and then take a long running stitch from uh, flower to flower. And once you pull it tight, it just makes that quick Ooh. little uh, Japanese balloon flower. Amazing! Yeah, and then connect the circle. And this one's going to fit on top of my center stem. And there's a little Perfect. opening in the middle which is where I'm going to finish with some French knots in the center. All right. Now for the bud. Again, I used a template. I've sewn the two strips of fabric together. I traced and cut out my two bud shapes, which I'm going to uh, put right sides together and do another seam on this side. Makes a little cone. <laughs> and. So this is the wide part? This is the, the top yeah, part. the wide part is at the top. And with the needle and thread, I gather the top edge. So now it looks like a little stocking cap. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> now another job for the milkshake straw. Jumbo straw, right. <laughs> Wherever you find the thickest milkshakes, that's where you're going to get your straw. And I am ready for a milkshake. <laughs> And then we'll just do the little turning trick here, and then stuff. Okay. And I've got all this cotton that it's time to use up those cotton balls from my vitamins. I'm tired of looking at them. I'm just going to stuff them in the balloon flower bud. That's, looks very realistic. Oh, it does? <laughs> yeah, you could just pop oh, it. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, this is one of those poppers. And then if you place the uh, seams to the side, I've got my needle threaded, and I'm going to just tack through the center along the raw edge. And up. Oh. See, Pat, you should have used that thread conditioner. I'll Told remember you. next time. <laughs> so I uh, tack the center, and then I'm going to uh, place the seam in the center. Actually, I'm just lining up the two seams. Squeeze them together. Flatten the center. Tack again. And that's a bud. All right. We'll just place it on top of the stem. Here's my little calyx. One on the left and one on the right. It's perfect. Yeah. And so then to finish it off, all you have to do right in the middle is French knots. And I'll, t I'll sew this down around the outside edge, or if you want it more dimensional, you can just tack points along the outside. And now I want to show you some of the beautiful blocks in Marilyn's quilt. 
Marilyn Martini made this beautiful quilt, and it is huge. It fits a king-size bed. Now, she made all 20 blocks, but she actually extended the size of it by setting it together with lattice and cornerstones and used solid blocks in among the flowers. Oh, it's wonderful. And then my cousin did the machine quilting for her and did all of the free motion stitching in the side and corner triangles. Now, let's just go ahead and start with a Japanese balloon flower. Marilyn used the same stripe, but she used a larger yo-yo. Boy, she was smart to do that in the center. But each block, she did something creative. This is her hair bell, and she did a folded bud here and a smaller bud. Wonderful stitching. And in each corner of the quilt are the four roses but something unique. Marilyn did a paper pieced bud, dimensional rose, it's terrific. She combined dimensional and flat flowers in the same quilt, made it very exciting. The morning glory is a flat, the flat pattern, but look at that bud, more piecing, more stitching in the center, the flower and the leaves. And then the, the tiger lily that we just did, well, she just flattened that whole tiger lily out, did more piecing in the bud. Now, I just love her pansy. The, the stitching is just so cute. It looks like the little kitty cat in the garden. Do you know, we have already done 16 flowers. There are only four left. I can't believe it. Now, the next time, I'll be showing you how to do the jonquil, the yellow jonquil right here. And then we will be doing the trillium next time, the pink with the beautiful stitching. Well, it is exhausting just thinking about all of this stitching and things we have to do. I think I'll just rest in the garden. What a beautiful day to start on a new project. I was looking over these Sunbonnet Sam figures stamped on white fabric. I'm going to embroider on the lines and then turn the blocks into a cute quilt for Colin, our little neighbor baby. Well, in the 1930s, there were a number of companies that sold marked quilt blocks. One company was the Virginia Snow Studios from Elgin, Illinois. Now, they cleverly promoted kits through their catalogs featuring Grandma Dexter. Now here's a drawing of Grandma Dexter. If you were a budding quilter, wouldn't you feel confident just to know that Grandma Dexter was there to offer support and advice? Now this is a Grandma Dexter's catalog. It's pretty old. And I was flipping through the catalog and found N.G.B. Dexter, pioneer in quality since 1820. Needlewomen everywhere have specified Dexter products for finest needlework. Well, I was thrilled to find these Sunbonnet Girl patterns. It's a series of 18-inch quilt blocks, and then the little Sunbonnet Girls are doing different activities in each one of them. The little girl right here with the watering can, little girl reading the book, and then the Sunbonnet here. They're just so cute. Well, I was excited because I have this quilt top with the very same Sunbonnets. Yeah, the blocks are identical. Right here is the little Sunbonnet bonnet reading the book walking along in the sunshine and here is the little sun bonnet with her umbrella and oh look at the flowers down here right at her feet and if you look closely you will see the stamped lines right along here it says Virginia Snow Studios Elgin Illinois Instructions say these lines will come out when laundered. Well, Grandma packed one dozen blocks to the envelope for 35 cents. She says 12 is the correct amount to make a full-size quilt. Well, I had even more fun with this catalog because on the next page I found the colonial lady with parasol. Now she's a more sophisticated older lady but we still can't see her face and what luck because I have the quilt with these 18 inch blocks. Well the quilt maker used a different print for each one of the dresses and then a coordinating solid for the bodice and then the lining of the umbrella and the hats and she finished off the edges in black embroidery floss. Grandma Dexter was the one that suggested to put the blocks together with the lattice. 
perhaps Grandma Dexter and the Sunbonnet Ladies will come by and help you get all your flower appliques finished.